Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by editor and co-host, editor of thewolfpacker.com, that is Matt Carter. And today we're going to preview NC State's upcoming matchup with the Syracuse Orangemen coming to Raleigh this Saturday, 4.30 p.m. kickoff, Matt, right? Or is it 4? 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on the dot. All right, so I, I got to be ready by 1 p.m. here. It's almost almost a noon kickoff, but uh, anyways, an afternoon start. You don't have to stay up too late to watch this one. It'll be on ACC Network. Uh, we will get into our preview analysis, what's going on with this game, but before we do that, uh, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us. We're everywhere you listen to podcasts, so if you listen to podcasts anywhere, search for the Wolfpacker Podcast, you'll find us. Subscribe, leave a review, and enjoy our shows. And also, if you please haven't already, uh, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the Wolfpacker YouTube channel. It helps us out tremendously. Every subscriber we get, it helps us out a ton. So if you guys like what we're doing, you like the show, you like, hell, if you just like Wolfpack Sports, there's no reason why you shouldn't be subscribing to our YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up, please, and drop a comment while you're at it. And again, reminder, the Wolfpacker is part of the On3 network now. It's going on three weeks as part of the On3 network to an exciting new college athletics uh, website, news, everything, hitting a lot of different markets. NC State is one of them, and the Wolfpacker.com, you'll find us on the On3 network. For a dollar, you can get a premium subscription to the On3 network for an entire year. Um, that's a great deal, and it's not going to be around forever because this is a new site. They're trying to get subscribers, so act while you can before it's too late and everybody's on the On3 network, and then you're going to have to pay the full money. So take advantage of it now. Pay that $1. You get a whole year of subscription, and you'll get to enjoy a lot of great content. So anyways, uh, Matt, let's talk about this football game. And Is this a trap game for NC State? Because clearly it's like, I don't know, everyone's thinking in their heads, right? Everybody's thinking, please Wake Forest, lose out the season because NC State's clearly going to win out, right? But I, not so fa- I mean, look, I've got confidence in NC State to win these next two games, and I'm going to pick NC State in these next two games. Spoiler alert if you haven't read the game predictions on the Wolfpacker.com yet. But these are no, there's no gimmies left. Syracuse is not a gimme. Syracuse is not the worst team in the ACC Atlantic like people thought they were going to be going into this season. This is a team fighting for bowl eligibility, and they've got two shots to do it against two ranked teams. So answer the question, Matt. Is this a trap game? Uh, I hadn't thought about that, surprisingly. but It may be a little bit. You know, I think, you know, spoiler alert, I wrote in my prediction, which I think probably mirrors what Justin had in here. We just went about it, explained it a little bit differently, is that on paper, this is a good matchup for NC State, on paper. Uh, just worry about the emotional and mental psyche of uh, NC State going into this game. Uh, yeah, Syracuse got wiped away by Louisville last week, 41-3. So, you know, maybe they're dealing with some emotional issues and some physical tolls being taken on them as well. I don't know. What I know is prior to that, Syracuse have been competitive in every single game they play. Uh, their other four losses other than Louisville, uh, they were three ACC losses in which they lost by a field goal in each of them. Three points. Not necessarily a field goal, but three points. They lost in overtime to Wake Forest by three. They lost on a field goal as time expired at Florida State to break a tie. Uh, and then I forget who the lost last to Clemson. one. Clemson, yeah. In which they missed the field goal at the end of the game that could have forced overtime. So, you know, that was the first time they had not been competitive. They clearly fight hard. They have a clear identity. They know who they are. They want to go to a bowl. They haven't been to a bowl since 2018. Uh, they don't go to bowls that often at Syracuse lately. They were picked to finish last in the Atlantic. They may end up finishing last in the Atlantic, but clearly they were much better than people anticipated. So I expect that they'll be 
mentally ready to go. They probably sense this is a great opportunity for them to get bowl eligible after NC State had that deflating loss at Wake Forest. So I think that's really what it comes down to. Can NC State get up, get the batteries recharged, uh, know what they're fighting for, even if it's not fighting for the ultimate goal. And you know, this game would be a whole lot easier if they hit the field on Saturday knowing that Clemson has a two-touchdown lead on Wake Forest with four or five minutes to go. Uh, if it's the opposite, they're going to have to really dig deep. Uh, because on paper, we, when we talk about this game, it's not a bad matchup at all for NC State. I don't think it's a bad matchup. I think it's really about being motivated, ready to play. And understanding also it could be a four-quarter game because of that's what Syracuse has typically done this year. Has anyone asked Dave Doran this week if he plans on discussing with the team Wake Force result on Saturday before kickoff, or has that topic not been okay. breached? You know, I don't, they haven't asked that specifically, but you know, Thayer Thomas went into very good detail about how Clemson hasn't lost a home game and X amount of years and how Boston College has their quarterback back and they're 2-0 and since he's been back. And, um, you know, so they clearly understand what Wake Forest has to play. They clearly understand that you know, they had a chance they could lose both games. Um, so, so I don't know if they'll be scoreboard watching, but that might be a coach's call, I imagine. I, mean, I think uh, you, you can tell me what you think differently. If I'm a head coach, I'm keeping one. I, I have somebody watching the game, and if it's looking good, i.e. Clemson winning, I'm giving an update. Yeah. I'm telling them before the game, we're not talking about Clemson Wake Forest before the game. But I'm also lying. You know, I'm using that as a cover. If Wake Forest is winning, I'm just saying I'm just gonna operate under the procedure that we have where we're not talking about it before the game. But if Clemson is winning, I'm gonna break my own rule and 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 yell out on a on a bullhorn to the team. Clemson winning. We have a chance. Go out there. You know what I mean? That's how I would do it. it I like your strategy. It's a, it's a tough call because you – it's it's contrary to everything, the entire message from the coaching staff the entire season. It's about us. Want to know every week. We're not focused on anybody else. So it would be pretty, uh, you know, against – everything that's been said thus far hypocritical is the word i was looking for there that you know you you bring up the result right before a game that said right before you run out of the tunnel at carter finley stadium if clemson were to win this game on saturday beat wake force there'd be nothing more motivating for that locker room than like you said dave doran yelling on a bullhorn go take care of business we're still in this thing you know, yeah. then I would expect a very electric Wolfpack squad in the first half. And my prediction, you know, might change accordingly just based on that context. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, writing the prediction, Matt, it, I like to try to look at the matchup from a football perspective. And I'd love to sit here and tell you that I 100% agree that NC State is a great matchup on paper against Syracuse. You look at Syracuse's strengths and weaknesses, it matches up very favorably to the Wolfpack as compared to NC State's strengths and weaknesses. But because of the context and because of where we are in the season, I think that this the the context of this game, the emotions, the motivation, who comes out with the energy, who comes out with the want to, you know, all the buzzwords that we can say and sometimes matter, sometimes not, I think they really matter in this game because to me it's it's a game where you definitely want to be the team that gets a hot start. I mean, look, every team in the country would love to take the first lead in every football game. But this is a game where I think there's not going to be a whole lot of momentum swings, if you will. I think that if a team can get ahead in this game early, they can maybe, you know, put in a knockout punch in the third quarter or something like that. I'd like to think it's going to be NC State at home. I'd like to think they come out with energy. I'd like to think that the crowd provides some energy this Saturday before a big, you know, game to end the season at home against Carolina next week. I'd also like to think they're not thinking about Carolina at all. Um, 
But, you know, it's all about execution in this game. Because if NC State executes, they are the better team than Syracuse, and they should win. But, you know, as we've mentioned, Syracuse has a ton of motivation going into this game. It's not like this is a Syracuse team that's 3-7 and seven and is playing for nothing and is just trying to evaluate its young players. It has two opportunities left against two ranked teams, and it just has to win one to get bowl eligibility, which would be a huge win for Dino Babers, who, again was had no expectations entering this season um you know to, to get the Syracuse team in a bowl game would be huge for him huge for that program and he's totally a player's coach I mean that locker room loves him so they're going to be playing for him um and like you said I think they're circling this is a good opportunity to get over state coming off a disappointing loss we'll see how they bounce back but I like the defense to bounce back in this game because I like to think of it as you know, when a, when a batter in baseball's on the on-deck circle, they put that donut on their bat to make the bat feel heavier? Well, I feel like this week, the defense is going to get to take that donut off its bat. It's going to have a little bit of a lighter bat to swing a little quicker because you just faced the best offense in the ACC, if not one of the best offenses in the country. Now you're going to face one of the worst, and the only thing they do well is running the football, which you're pretty darn good at stopping. So I think... I'd like to think NC State can win this game from defense alone, and we'll see what the offense can do. Yeah. I mean, I, look, they are the most, from a run-to-pass standpoint, the most uh, one-dimensional offense in the ACC in terms of relying on the run. The only other team that might come close to that is Florida State. Uh, they really rely on the, you know Jordan Travis and the two running backs and, and – maybe Louisville a little bit, but those teams still throw the ball. Syracuse is the only team, if you've read the uh, scouting Syracuse report online, in the ACC that has more rushing yards than passing yards. And and it's not like it's 2,000 rushing yards and 1,900 passing yards. I think it was like an 800-yard differential between how many yards they have rushed for versus how much they have passed for. That's not to say they can't throw the football. Yeah, Garrett Schrader started his career at Mississippi State. Um, it's his second school. He's not a strong arm quarterback. Never has been. I saw him in high school. That was the book on him then. But he's a decent athlete, and he can throw it a little bit. He's just not a great passer. Not what they do, and they lost their best wide receiver to the transfer portal, and I'm sure that hurt them quite a bit. But they have the ACC best running back. And he's not only the ACC best running back, he's probably one of the two or three best running backs in college football, and Sean Tucker. And they have a veteran offensive line that has a boatload of starts under his belts now, and they're taking their lumps and playing better for it. Um, and, and Garrett Schrader is a pretty good athlete. They've gone there. They had him in the 4-5, the 4-6 range, and the 40-yard dash. Um, while he was at... Uh, NC State football camp. So, yeah, that's um, that, that's a good running attack. But to, to your point, NC State stopped the run pretty good. They stopped it against Wake Forest. It was not the Wake Forest running game that hurt NC State. Louisville probably the only ACC team that really ran it well. And NC State, you know, managed to hold them to, what, 14 points or 13 points or something like that. So, um, and they also help with the red zone because that, that's when you force teams to really, you can really load up the box. And so, uh, the only way I have about this game is Syracuse does have a legitimately good defense. It is a good defense. I think NC State's offense, we can call it for what it is. Maybe a, a slightly above offense that at times can be pretty good and at times they can get bogged down um and so this is a tough assignment for them good news is i don't think they have to score a lot three touchdowns may do it uh, and syracuse does not turn you over it, it does it with disruption in the backfield as much as anything and they have a good group of corners but this is a, a very aggressive disruptive defense so Devin Leary's got to be quick with his decision making. They're, they're good against the run. They're good against the pass. That's what the challenge will be. Uh, can they can they 
Uh, Syracuse would love for this game to be in below 20 points for both teams. Uh, I think if NC State can get into the 20s, it'll feel good about itself. I'm glad you brought up the offense because, you know, not only is this game an important game that NC State needs to win to continue to, you know, hold on hope for ACC championship game potential or, you know, just to get into a good bowl at the end of the season, you know, have a chance to get double-digit wins for the first time and since 2002. I mean, there's, there's still a lot on the table to play for. But I'll also say if this is a game that NC State can end up controlling and winning – it also needs to think about maybe gaining some confidence on offense back again before a game where you're going to face a UNC team that's going to be able to put points on the board. You're going to you're going to be you're going to need to be able to score points against North Carolina. You're not going to be able to shut them out and win a game in the 20s. Is it time to just let Devin Leary cook? Is it time to just right that they cried out against Wake Forest? Fair, but do you just, I mean, do you just continue to abandon the run? Because, look, if you're not going to run the football against the worst rushing defense in the ACC, are you going to try against one of the better units in the ACC? I mean, I guess you could maybe give it another crack against Carolina. They're not very good at stopping the run, but, I mean, at this point, do you just accept that NC State hasn't been able to run the ball? Because I feel like we've been talking about it all season long. It's just never come to fruition against Power 5 opponents. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up about Power 5 opponents, because I think there's a view out there that oversimplifies it that ever since Chandler Javala went down, haven't been able to run the football. They played two Power 5 teams with Chandler Javala and didn't run the football that well in those two games. They had a decent rushing total against Clemson in the end, but it was still below three yards per carry. And that was a game where they really racked up the yardage when Clemson defense was on the field for 40 minutes. <laughs> as much as anything. So, um, yeah, I do think it's a function of they just had, they just not built apparently well enough to, to run the football. I think they could have run against Wake Forest. When I look back at the game, I think it was there to run for, and I think the, the plan was sound to go after the shorthanded Wake Forest secondary, especially with how well Devin Lee has been playing. And it ended up with 42 points, 35 of which came on offense. Yeah, so it wasn't a bad plan. The, 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 where things went haywire was not stopping Wake Forest on third down um, and not converting third down. So against Syracuse, I will say this. They got two corners, particularly the one is the North Carolina native, Garrett Williams, one of the better cover corners in the ACC. Uh, the rookie Duke Chestnut on the other end has had a nice time. Uh, they're both young. Great name, by the way. Yeah, they're both they're both young, so maybe the state thinks they have an experience advantage. But look, they're also really good at rushing the passer. They're one of the country's best at getting sacks. So, um, you know, it may be a game where you think, hey, let's see if we can get the running game going to kind of alleviate the pressure on Leary. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I really, don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, you know, they clearly feel more comfortable throwing the football right now. And I understand why. Uh, but I do think that had they committed to running against Wake Forest, there was success to be had there in that game. I agree. But it's, uh, you know, it's not good for the mental to dwell on those things, right? We just got to move forward, go want to know this week. Um, I know one way that NC State can definitely win this game. If Bam Knight just rushes ten for 10 attempts, you give him 10 carries, NC State's going to win. Because they haven't lost yet if Bam <laughs> Knight gets at least 10 carries in a game. I knew um, you would like that stat. I, I saw I the retweet. Like I loved it. I loved it. It's interesting, right? Because it's like the games – now, some of it's context. If you if you get behind, you're not going to run the football. He might, might not get 10 – rush attempts it's not right. foolproof but it is interesting that when nc state is able to get the run game going it probably means that bam knight's getting more than 10 carries and that equates to success it's no secret how do you i think it's like when you at least try to get the run game going it helps helps your team yeah i don't Sorry. i i still don't understand that one from last week but we'll <laughs> see i i'd like to i 
I, w- I expect Bam Knight to get 10 carries in this game. I Just something tells me they are going to try to run the football. Maybe they can have some success. I wouldn't expect it. We've been holding our breath all season. I hate to be that guy, but, you know, it the, the offense is what it is at this point. Now, I will say, like, not to get to this point, because we're not at this point yet, but just... Just to mention, just something to keep on the back burner. There's a lot to like about this team for next year, too. I know we don't want to talk about next year, but but the development of Devin Leary this season is a huge storyline that no matter what the end result of this season is, chances are NC State's going to have one of the better quarterbacks in college football returning next season with you know what could end up being a very solid returning cast coming along with him so look we talk about program stability a lot of talk about you know Dave Doran his nine-year tenure his track record at NC State you know NC State fans asking themselves what what should we want in a football program what should be the goals of the football program I know it's easy to get hopes down after a really just a heartbreaking loss against Wake Forest cards are on the table again and NC State doesn't find a way to get it done but you know, it it shows program growth that in a year where they circled 2021 as their window for opportunity based on the recruiting classes, well, that window might be a little bit longer necessarily than the previous window, which was 2017. Of course, we saw 2017. 2018's team, 2018's team was not as good as 2017's team. I'm not I'm not saying 2022. Yeah, you know, we don't know yet, but I'm just saying that it could be an even better team next year, just depending on what happens in the off season. Your quick thoughts on that before we wrap up the podcast. I don't know. We'll see how, uh, I would say this. Syracuse will be a pretty nice team next year, by the way, going through them. I, I think they'll be well built to have a nice little season if they're patient with Dino Baby, who I like. To your question about NC State, it's going to depend on what some of these decisions are with guys like Icky and the injured linebackers, Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson and uh, the running back, what do they, they decide to do? Thayer Thomas at receiver. You're going to lose to Meezy. Um, Grant Gibson at center. What's he going to decide to do? So many variables at play. Um, it's, just, it's just hard. To your point, yeah, you've got a great starting point at quarterback in Devin Leary. And, and that's where you want to start. Um, but, yeah, it'll be... Um, be interesting. We're in the transfer portal era and that extra year of eligibility that everyone got. It just makes so many dynamics that we really won't know, I think, until January what the team will look like. And I would and I wouldn't expect Clemson to just automatically bounce back next year. Now, is it possible that they will and they'll be back in the college football playoff and the train will keep rolling? Totally a possibility, but I mean you look at some of the things happening on the recruiting trail right now too, with Clemson losing some battles that Clemson typically wouldn't lose could be signs that the Clemson dynasty or the the monopoly of the ACC Atlantic may be coming to an end. Maybe we don't see another, you know, six year run of just dominance in the ACC Atlantic. So just things to keep in mind, but plenty to watch this weekend. You should be Clemson fans this weekend. You should be rooting for the Tigers against Wake Forest. And of course you should be rooting for NC State against Syracuse, which could set up an epic end of the ACC regular season into Thanksgiving weekend. So we will see. Thanks again for listening. Quick reminders before you tune out. Please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to us, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can watch us on YouTube. Give this video a thumbs up. Drop a comment while you're at it. For just a dollar, join the On3 network at thewolfpacker.com. You get premium access to all of the great content Matt Carter has going for you. Uh, some great contributors coming along as well at thewolfpacker.com. So you want to take advantage of this deal while you still can. A dollar gets you premium subscription for a year. It's a great deal. Take advantage of it now. Go to thewolfpacker.com and do it. Uh, also, please follow us on social media. You can follow our main account at the Wolfpacker on Twitter. You can follow me personally at Justin H. Will. And give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack on thewolfpacker.com. So for Matt Carter, this is Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.